Dear friends, welcome to Inquest, in-depth analysis and to the point. In this video, let us discuss about 7th October 2021 daily current affairs. And this activity is useful for your UPSC, KPSC and all other competitive examinations. And the PDF of the same will be given in the description box. You may download the same after watching the video. And index of today's uh, learning is WHO recommends first anti-malarial vaccine. So till today, there was no vaccine for malaria. Now, uh, WHO has recommended the first anti-malarial vaccine. Number two, Nobel Prize 2021. So it's been awarded in the area of chemistry. We will know the winners and their contribution. Number three, Uttar Pradesh tops the list of states emitting fine particulate matter. So numbers four, seven destinations from Karnataka chosen for Ek Bharat Shrest Bharat. So we will be learning about what is this Ek Bharat Shrest Bharat and what are the seven destinations that are chosen from Karnataka for this particular program. Number five, TriFed to sign MOU with the government of Jammu and Kashmir for the implementation of one done Yojana. Now let's see each and every article in detail. Number one, WHO recommends first anti-malarial vaccine. So in a historic move, the World Health Organization endorsed the first anti-malarial vaccine as the mankind enters a key turning point in the battle waged relentlessly over decades between man and mosquito, the vector. So the vector that carries this particular uh, plasmodium is, uh, you know, female anaphylis. So now there is a kind of uh, development with respect to development of vaccine. The WHO said that it was recommending the use of RTS S slash AS01. So this is the name of the vaccine that has been coded so far. So once it is commercially available, they will have different names. So malaria vaccine among children in sub-Saharan Africa and in other regions with moderate to high, you know, plasmodium falciparum malaria transmission. Dear friends, there are many strains of, uh, you know, malaria causing uh, protozoa like uh, plasmodium falciparum. Then we have plasmodium malaria then we have plasmodium vivax, then plasmodium ovale, and plasmodium nolacy. But among all these different strains of uh, this plasmodium, so falciparum is the most dangerous one. So that is the reason why the vaccine has been, uh, you know, announced or recommended against this, uh, you know, plasmodium falciparum. Now, where it is uh, significant, where the actually studies have been conducted, WHO recommendations was based on the results from an ongoing pilot program in Ghana, Kenya, and uh, Malawi. The development comes at a time when WHO and its partners have reported a stagnation in the progress against the disease that kills more than 2,60,000 African children under the age of five every year. So there was a kind of stagnation because uh, there was no progress seen with respect to the development of uh, this particular vaccine, but now there is a kind of push you know, with respect to recommendations given by WHO, because this is highly significant with respect to, uh, you know, the African country, because uh, around 2,60,000 African children under the age of just five, they die annually because of this, you know, malaria. So malaria remains a primary cause of childhood illness and death in sub-Saharan Africa. So for that reason, the you know, the discovery of vaccine against the same is very much essential. So with this, let's go to article number two. Uh, do you win Nobel Chemistry Prize for work on catalyst? Now, what do you mean by catalyst? Catalysts are uh, chemical substances that actually increase the rate of reaction without affecting any other parameter. So they are called as, you know, such substances are called as catalysts. So there is a kind of discovery with respect to same chemical substances by Germany's Benjamin List and US-based David McMillan won Nobel Chemistry Prize for developing a tool to build molecules which have helped make chemistry more environmentally friendly. So their discovery is uh, more environmentally friendly. Their tool which they developed independently of each other. So it's not, uh, you know, they did not work together. So their discovery is independent of each other can be used to control and accelerate chemical reaction. So it can either control the rate of reaction or it can even accelerate the chemical reaction, exerting a big impact on drug research. So it is going to be one of the big boost to you know drug research wherein a lot of chemical reactions are going to be involved. So next article is about particulate matter. Uttar Pradesh in the country tops list of states emitting fine particulate matter. Now what is this particular matter? 
Uttar Pradesh is the largest emitter of PM 2.5. So the particulate matter, so that is uh, to the magnitude of 2.5 is highly dangerous because it can penetrate you know, the internal organs. So that is why it is, uh, you know, classified as the most dangerous uh, size of particulate matter that is 2.5. So the class of particulate matter considered most harmful to health according to an analysis by the Council on Energy, Environment and Water. So the council or research body looked at five of the most reliable data sources, international and national that have tracked and measured the quantum and source of air, air pollution in India. Now, what is the reason uh, for, uh, you know, uh, the UP becoming the topmost uh, state in uh, producing high particulate matter? The high emission from Uttar Pradesh were largely due to a significant share of PM 2.5 emissions from solid fuel. So majorly it is because of burning solid fuel that is used in the households. As we all know, UP is one of the highly populous states in the country. See, the population of Uttar Pradesh is highest in India. So by virtue of being India's most populous state, it had high proportion of households relying on this form of fuel. So since the population is more, at the same time, most of the population actually rely on solid fuel. So that is the major contributing factor for particulate matter. So apart from, uh, you know, Uttar Pradesh, other states like Maharashtra, Gujarat, Odisha, West Bengal, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, Tamil Nadu and Rajasthan, they are also actually in the list uh, as they too fear in the list of top polluters. Now, what are the common pollutants? So this is very important for, point for your examination point of view. So the major uh, pollutants are PM 2.5, that is particulate matter 2.5, particulate matter 10, then uh, nitrous oxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, ammonia, and non-methane volatile organic compounds and emissions of the same. So India has a national clean air campaign that is called as NCAP that aims to reduce pollution in 122 of the most polluted cities by 2024. So the target year to reduce the pollution by national clean air campaign is 2024. To meet the NCAP target of 20 to 30 percentage reduction in particulate concentration by 2024, we need to estimate emission reductions needed across the sector. So we need to look in for the emission reduction basically to achieve our target by 2024 to an extent of reduction for about 20 to 30 percentage. So with this, let's go to article number four. Seven destinations in state chosen for Ek Bharat Shrest Bharat. In the state means I'm talking about the state of Karnataka. Seven destinations from state of Karnataka have been identified under the Ek Bharat Shrest Bharat program by the union government for the visit of students pursuing higher education courses. So this program is designed for those students who are actually pursuing higher education for further you know, knowledge or uh, interaction with the people. So across India, there are 100 places have been chosen, among which seven are from the state of Karnataka. So the center has identified 100 destinations across the nation, which of which seven are from Karnataka. They are Haivole, Belur, Vijayapura, Hampi, Pattadakal, Shavana Balagola, and Sri Rangapatana. So according to the Ministry of Education, the destinations were identified based on two criteria. So what is the criteria or what are the criteria to choose the areas across various uh, states for this particular program? So there are two criteria. One is based on footfalls. Footfalls is nothing but number of people actually visit the places. And another is world heritage and iconic site. So as per the suggestions by the Ministry of Tourism. Now, what is the purpose of this? The student visits to these destinations are part of National Education Policy 2020. The NEP 2020 proposes to strengthen and promote the spirit of Ek Bharat Shrest Bharat among students. The aim of Ek Bharat Shrest Bharat program is to enhance interaction and promote mutual understanding between people of different states and union territories through the concept of state UT pairing. So this will be, this is going to enhance the interaction between people of different states and union territories. So that is the reason why this concept has been named as state UT pairing. The state carry out activities to promote a sustained and a structured cultural connect in the areas of language learning, culture, 
ट्रेडिशन एंड म्यूजिक टूरिज्म एंड ट्यूज इन स्पोर्ट्स एंड शेयरिंग ऑफ बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस एक्सेट्रा सो विद दिस लेट्स गो टू आर्टिकल नंबर फाइव सो दिस आर्टिकल इज रिलेटेड टू मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ ट्राइबल अफेयर्स ट्राइफेड टू साइन एम ओ यू विद द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ जम्मू एंड कैश्मीर for the implementation of one dan yojana now what is the purpose of this to tell you in uh, brief so whatever the you know minor forest produce that is there with respect to tribal population now there will will be a uh, provision made for its marketing so that is the total uh, theme of this particular collaboration so what is trifed trifed is tribal cooperative marketing development federation of india so as a part of its mission to improve the livelihoods of the tribals both forest dwellers and artisans the and work towards tribal empowerment tribe trifed has been carrying out several programs and initiatives on such initiative is the one of the such one of such initiatives is one dan program see one dan program is the initiative of ministry of tribal affairs never confuse this with ministry of forestry looking at the name one dan so which trifed is spearheading in 25 states so this program is there in uh, 25 states and 307 districts with availability of minor forest producers as well as significant forest dwelling tribal population so this program is majorly uh, in the states where there is more tribal population so trifed and government of jammu and kashmir will soon enter into a memorandum of understanding for the implementation of the vandan yojana and to promote tribal enterprise in the region so the major uh, objective of this is as i told you to encourage tribal enterprise so now why uh, there is uh, mou with respect to the state of jammu and kashmir because 11.91 percentage of the total population of jammu and kashmir constitutes scheduled tribes according to 2011 census so as per the census of 2011 so out of the total population 11.91 percentage of the total population is tribes in jammu and kashmir the tribal dominated districts in jammu and kashmir include kupwara baramula badgam rajouri udampur and katwa so these are the districts where uh, you can see major population of tribes in jammu and kashmir so most of the tribal areas consists of dense forest and hills which also provide for the availability of uh, you know mfps in um, abundance so apart from this the valley is also known for its richness in art and craft the tribal residing in this region are actually skilled in making traditional art crafts which with limited reach to the market so they are very skilled in making art crafts but the problem is the reach to the market is very much limited so this collaboration will help them to earn money so the vandan yojana is a component of mechanism for marketing of minor forest produce so as i told you this is going to majorly help them to market what they actually produce including art crafts and the minor forest produce through minimum support price like how we have in agriculture produce the minimum support price similarly there will be msp for minor forest produce and development of value chain for msp so that's why this scheme is also in short called as msp for mfp scheme msp is minimum support price and mfp is uh, minor forest produce the fundamental model of this scheme is to set up tribal community owned one dan vikas kendra cluster so the major majorly they actually what they do is they create one dan vikas kendra clusters in predominantly forested tribal districts so the target place where they choose or uh, you know prepare such kendras is majorly you know predominantly forested tribal districts where one one dan vikas kendra cluster shall constitute of 15 one dan self help groups so one kendra will have 15 one dan self help groups each comprising of up to 20 ntfp that is non timber forest produce non timber forest produce means anything other than wood maybe uh, honey or medicinal plants etc so such gatherers gatherers that is about 300 beneficiaries so this is the total program and its objectives so this is all for the the you know the uh, today's or uh, seventh current affairs of october 2021 so if you have any questions you can definitely put in comments box we will be more than happy to answer your questions
ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಾಚಿಂಗ್ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ